Now, here's sports director Scott Reister with KCCI 8 Sports, powered by Fairway. Welcome to week five of Football Friday Night. I'm Scott Rice, and we'll get to Elgin Rucker in our game of the week out in Urbandale in just a minute. That one went late, but still, so much to get to, including some huge showdowns in Class 4A. We're going to groove and move on over to Waukee to get started for a top 10 matchup. Johnson ranked six, Waukee ranked eight. Johnson, with strong start. Aiden Moore and Cade Godwin swat the Johnston, excuse me, the Waukee punt away. So Johnson gets great field position and look at uh, Tyler Moore, the future Iowa State tight end, following that pass for the touchdown. Perfect pass from Jack Rutz to 7 0 Johnson. Waukee got another incredible game by Aaron Smith. This guy makes more plays than Broadway, baby. Jacob Holcomb to Smith. Touchdown. Waukee on the board and now watch this. He's going to say, hey, are we going to do the thing? Are we going to do the thing with the leg? Yeah, right there. Here we go. Slow mo. And oh, we nailed it. Waukee runs away with this in the second half. Final score. Big over Johnston tonight. We'll get that final for you in just a minute. Well, two of the highest profile players in the Valley Ankeny game were out. Ankeny running back Arlen Bruce, a future Hall of Famer, excuse me, future Hawkeye. Don't want to do that much to him yet. No pressure, Arlen. Future Hawkeye still ruled ineligible by the IHSAA. Valley quarterback Jake Ruby, a K-State signee, found out Wednesday he's ineligible. Both players appealing. And uh, Ankeny, though, no trouble without Bruce. As usual, they are awesome this year. Up 21-7. Jace Bauer to Colin Kadoff down the sideline. And then Bauer to Kadoff again out of the backfield. And Ankeny goes Bauer up 28 to 3. Ankeny Moore, Jackson Pinegraw strips Mason Morrow and recovers the fumble. 35 to 10, the final. Valley has lost three games in a row. They're one and three. You've got to see this run. We'll call it the run of the year. Ames down 14-0 to Centennial in the second quarter. Taman Lipsy, who hasn't played football for years before the season, picks it up off the turf. How does he not get tackled there? Runs through about three guys, four guys. I've watched this about four times. He, he broke about seven tackles. The nationally ranked point guard prospect scores from 83. Longest touchdown run by QB in school history. Ames. Back after a two-week break, could not hold on to the late lead. Centennial gets the touchdown from Trey Porter in the fourth. Jags go up, and the Jags win 21-17 to despite Lipsy's heroic. All right, time for a quick break. Up next, we're going back the other way. We'll get to some small schools, plus our game of the week from Urbandale and Fort Knox.
Friday. Kaka, hello everybody. You're watching KCCI Football Friday Night. Kaka, Kaka. Polly Water Cracker. I always wondered what that sound, what that guy sounded like, and now we know. Welcome back, everybody. It is our game of the week coverage. Elgin Rocker with number two Urbandale having a banner year. Could they keep it going against Fort Dodge? So you might be wondering, was that Elgin horribly failing at sounding like a hawk? Well, is Urbandale the number two ranked team in the state? Are there birds on my mask right now? The answers are yes, yes, and coincidentally, yes. Call. That was me being a bird brain, but our game of the week is a no-brainer. 4-0 Urbandale versus 3-1 Fort Dodge. Second quarter, Urbandale up 7-2. Jayhawks hand it off to Tucker Langenberg, who keeps his wings flapping and gets through for the score. His second touchdown of the night makes it 14-2 Urbandale. But right back at you, Fort Dodge responds from their own 27. Tyler Schreer off the hook and lateral, and he goes all the way for the touchdown. Two-point conversion, also good, makes it 14-10. Third quarter, Fort Dodge dodging haymakers and fighting back. Carson Peterson to Javion Jondal for a 12-yard score makes it 28-17. But Urbandale still flying high and going to the air to Kai Black, who picks up a huge first down. And birds of a feather make catches together. Peyton Riddinghouse goes deep to Graham Friedrichson, and he pulls it down like he's got talents. Don't mess with the claw. 31-yard touchdown. Fort Dodge kept coming back, but Urbandale would not let up. They score again with less than two minutes to play and get the win. Final score, 42-28. All right, welcome back. Ballard's road tour continues thanks to the derecho. The Bombers are without a home field, but not without success. Just one loss, and it was by a point. Tonight they called Boone home, and they faced Humboldt. Take you out to this one in Boone. Here we go. Humboldt hunting to Ballard early on. Humboldt, good squad this year. Just one loss. Ballard's Mason Murphy. Look at this return. See what's there left. Spin move! And then the cut. Look at that. Exploding up the field. Eventually pulled out of the 15 yard line. A couple of plays later, Mr. Murphy going to take the handoff sweep. He's going to get four yards in for the touchdown. Bombers go up 7 0. Ballard getting it done all night on defense as well. Humboldt managed two touchdowns. Could use a few more. 31-14. Ballard with a lot to cheer for tonight. Homecoming night for the Pella Dutch. The crowd not giving up. Scoreless in the first. Carson Dunn can't find anyone, so he runs it himself. Great rivalry between these two schools. Can Carlisle pick up the win? They were down, though. And then QB going deep to Jacob Imhoff. Wrong color jersey gets it. Josh Warner for Pella picks it off. It's the interception. Second quarter, Carlisle's got the ball, and they're down 3 0. And this is trouble. They get swarmed. Has somehow Levi Roos gets that ball, says, I got it. It's now 10 0 Pella. Final score in Pella. Pella gets the win over Carlisle. Atlantic in Des Moines Christian. Des Moines Christian coming off a two week pause because of COVID cases at the school, and they were rusty. Late second. Down 14 0 in Atlanta's Grant Sturm picks it up and is gone. Gets all the way down near the goal line. Sturm was all over the place tonight. Moments later, Garrett McLaren going right, going left, coming at you and lunging across the goal line. Des Moines Christian's homecoming is a bad one on the scoreboard. 38 to nothing. Is this kid the fan of the night? Hard to argue that. He was working at Marsdale St. Mary's. Really didn't have a team last year due to low numbers. Fast forward to this year and they are 4-0. Brooks Trom turns on the Jets for six. And then Brooks Trom again. What a name. Brooks Trom. 13-0. He had the first three touchdowns of the game in this one. It was the Brooks Trom show over Grandview Christian. Martinsdale St. Mary's wins it 77-14. Up next, it wasn't in pads, but the Metro players took the field on a Friday night some of the top plays as the five schools came together.
Welcome back scores coming into the newsroom. Pella 34, Carlisle 7, and Waukee 45-17 over Johnston, the final in that one. Now the Des Moines Metro Schools waiting and waiting, and the prospects of returning seem dimmer by the day, so the players just had a better idea. Play their own game, a 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament. All five Metro teams came. They had the anthem with the moment of unity. Cheerleaders came, fans came. Hundreds of people turned up near Waterworks Park. Here's some highlights. Roosevelt Lincoln, Jamison Patton, who helped organize the event, to Jaden Coger, who's got the wheels. Outruns everybody for the score. The whole idea started with a text from Lincoln's Joshua Jenkins. And Jenkins, of course, you know he was going to have a big day. Scores went right there. It was not a school-sponsored event. It was just kids getting organized and doing what they love. It just shows everybody how passionate we are about playing. We got our season stripped away from us. You know, even if we don't, if we're not able to play for the rest of the season, I just think this speaks volumes and the community is just going to know that we did this. 